Hello and welcome to our pondering time. Today we are going to start out discussing the Mandela Effect. The Mandela Effect refers to a situation in which a large mass of people believe that a situation happened one way, then find out it did not happen that way. Uh, uh. <laughs> Welcome, Mrs. Smurf. And Nobly. Enjoy. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Press it. Subscribe and like. You got five, four, three, two, one. Nelson Mandela is our first discussion on the Mandela effect. Now, most people know that he died in 2013. Well, fair amount of people remember him dying in 88, 89, maybe he's 86, somewhere around there in a funeral taking place on TV. Well, of course, we all know Mandela was locked up until 98, 99, and then he became the president and ended up dying as the president. So, we're going to touch on why people may believe the one way over the other. So, what do you remember, Smurfy, about the Mandela Effect? I remember, because I was in school, so we watched it on the TV. I remember the funeral they did for, the, for Nelson Mandela back in the 80s. So, so you remember the... Funeral in the 80s, right? Yes, I do. So you're one of them people that don't remember when you found out they died in 2013. Well, I, I was shocked know. because it's like, it, yeah. See, this I thought one. He had, yeah, he had died back in the 80s. I remember that funeral for sure on TV because, you know, we took the time we watched it. It was, you know, a big deal back then, so. I, I hear you. I'm on the other side of the fence. I don't remember the funeral. But I do remember when the apartheid were happen and they captured Nelson Mandela. At first, everyone thought he was dead. And I do believe they had a, what we would call now a mock funeral because they thought he was dead. And then like five or six years later, they found out that he was locked up. And that's when the movement was to free Nelson Mandela. And then he finally got freed in the late 90s, early 2000s, and became president. And from listening to the Mandela effect, I, from what I heard, it was 92, because he became president, the first president in 92. Right, I think he got released in, what, 91, 90, or maybe he even got released in 90. 90. Yeah, he got released in 90. That's what I'm saying. I think that's I think, what I had heard after, but I still, yeah. But I can understand what you're saying, the, a mock funeral, because nobody knew where he was for a certain amount of time. Right, they kidnapped him and locked him up and told everyone he was dead. Because they, so, you know. No, I can see that and I can understand how it would be a confusion. And then as, when he became a martyr is when they released, when they released that he wasn't dead. And then the movement to get him free, and then he got free, became the president, ended up dying in 2013. Yeah, I had my dates a little wrong. Maybe that's a Mandela effect. Maybe I remember <laughs> different dates. You never, never knew. No, so you... that's the Nelson Mandela in a nutshell. Yeah, the squeaky, squeaky nutshell. Now, here's the one that gets me every single time. This is the one... I think I could debunk, because I go into all of this stuff trying to debunk it, even though it entertains me. Most of this stuff just entertains me. I'm waiting to see, watch one of these conspiracy theories and seeing which movie it comes into next. Or which, which person is going to use this conspiracy theory in a movie. That's why I love conspiracy theories. They're entertaining, but, but that's a whole other story. I go into debunking, you know, in my head. And if you could out the bunk my debunked it system then uh, I'm all for it and this Ed McMahon one got me because I remember the Ed McMahon big check 
I don't remember no other big check given that they say Ed McMahon was part of another one. But here's what I think about the men that lost that. Well, first I'll let you tell them what you think will happen. Go Smurfy. I think everyone is full of bull hockey because Ed McMahon done Publishers Clearing House for years. Publishers Clearing House will give you big checks that you can't cash. I still ain't never met anyone that won one. But he's he done it up until I'm gonna say ten years ago was the last commercial I seen with Ed McMahon for publish publishers clearing house. I know he did that little skit about going back and getting all going to see all the people he gave the checks back because he's broke and he want, needs some he needs a loan. <laughs> I remember he did that with some I can't remember the rapper name, but that that was hilarious. But here's the what I think is why it's a Mandela effect. Because if you look on the website, they say they've never hired Ed McMahon. I believe that's true. I believe that's not the Mandela effect. Why they think it's a Mandela effect is because commercials that you see for these companies are not made by the companies. They hire an outside firm and then they hire actors. So technically, them actors don't work for the company. Just in case these actors later on get into some scandal quotation mark, quotation mark, they have that 33 degrees of separation. Thank you, Freemasons. Thank you, Freemasons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I can see, yeah, because knowing how things were now getting into knowing, um, I could see that point of where he wasn't hired straight through publishers clearing house okay fine i get that but to say he didn't do any commercials that's not what they said that's not what that's not what the website says it says ed mcmahon did not work for us that's all it says it didn't say he didn't do commercials it didn't say he didn't do, it just says he did not work for us and this is why i can exceed this then that was my misunderstanding. Because that's what most people say in their videos when they're talking about it, that they say they did no, he did no commercials. That's not what the website says. Because I was curious and stumped. I went to the website when I first heard this many, right. many moons ago. I, want, I told you, I'm a debunker. I have to see it with my own eyes and believe it. Like I said, I'm entertained by it. Sometimes I hope it's true. <laughs> right? But, it was, yeah. But I go into a skeptic until you can prove me otherwise. That's and I think most people, with. I think most people should go into conspiracies so they don't get caught up in the. Honestly, that's the best way to go into any type of conspiracy. And I'm the first person that loves to talk about conspiracy theories. And people always say, "Do you believe in conspiracy theories?" I said, "Do the government charge you with conspiracy?" <laughs> well, there's your answer. <laughs> And that's for the sour notes. <laughs> okay, so what is going to be their next topic? Okay. Well, we're going to talk about. Oh, you want to pick one this time? Yeah. I'll, okay, I'll you go pick with one. one off my list this time. I'm a hog, man. Oink, oink. Please <laughs> give me all the pigs in me. All right. Um, I remember the Monopoly game. Okay. Yeah. This is a big one for me because I played it for years. We always had family, you know, game night, everything else. And on the box. Uncle Pennybags. I remember he always had a monocle. Uncle Pennybags. Now they're saying he was, he had never had a monocle. See, I used to play Monopoly all the time. I used to be the Monopoly champ. I can't remember either way, and I got one of the greatest <laughs> memories in the world. Like, someone just zapped that image out of my head. I do remember with the monocle, but I also remember that I think that was more of the, uh, when, when it came out for Nintendo. When the, when the, uh, Super Nintendo, I should say, not the original Nintendo. Because they had the Monopoly for the Super Nintendo, and I think he had the monocle and the Monopoly. Super Nintendo, and that just became what everyone thought. See, that's what I think. But at the same point in time, I'm—I—I I, I don't know. 
Like I said, I come with debunking. The reason is to debunk. Well, and, you know, some of the videos I've watched and everything else, you know, and they talk about when he was first made, because it was made after uh, J.P. Morgan. Right. Actually, so, um, and he always, always wore spectacles. Right, he always had the single ones. Yeah. No, he had. The double ones, yeah. Right, he had spectacles. And they said that he, they didn't put spectacles on him. So it's like still, so that throws me kind of for a loop, you know what I mean? Because I always remembered the monocle. That was one thing that always stuck out to me with, you know, the Monopoly man. I think that everyone got the Monopoly man mixed up with, with the Peanuts guy. You know what? And that could be. And you know there was a Mandela effect for the peanut oh, guy, but I gotta I find a, that one. Yeah, <laughs> so, there's a Mandela effect. Because that one's not on my list today. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the peanut guy, <laughs> but yeah, I, that that's a good one. Cause I, as for the life of me, I can't remember what it was, and I used to play it all the time. Yeah, I mean, up until like ten years ago, we you know we get together and do. Even if it was just once a year, do a family game night at my sister's somewhere. You know, it was always Monopoly or something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah, those are the ones that, like, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> they just intrigue me because it's like, okay, you know. Yeah, these are the ones I that have no real way. answers. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Right, what's the next one, Smurfy? All right. Growing up as a kid, I read these books. Okay, the Berenstein Bears. Berenstein. <laughs> Berenstein. Right. Mm. I can't. Berenstein sounds so funny and so foreign to me. See, I really think. I really think, because people don't understand uh, modern, uh, the newer generation, whatever you want to call it, the, the kids that were born from 95 on up, don't remember video stores back in the 80s and the early 90s where they were making their own labels. They would get one dvd and then go in the back and they had license to copy them that's why some of the copies would be good and some would be crappy late 90s they uh, movie places started shipping them crates instead of just one right so this is where i think might happen same with the the book places you will have on the east coast you have a, a book people sending out a book and then you have in the midwest the same thing with the textbooks where everyone thinks there's 52 states instead of 50 because the South publisher uh, made the books when when the a bill to pass for the for Puerto Rico and Washington D.C. was still in the Senate, so they thought it was going to get passed. So they they printed that there's 52 states now and delivered all these books in the South. And you know how it is with school yeah. systems. Once they got a book, they're not getting rid of it. Right. So this is where the fifty two fifty stays. So I'm thinking this is where their two different spellings come from. Why they have people have tapes and books and of course people have Photoshop. I mean No, and I you get know, that. this is yeah. all this Mandela effects during the man, uh Photoshop no. era too. No, totally understandable. You but know. this is why I think people remember it spelled one way and then the other because you got the books and then the movies. They were basically independent contractors, and if you, we all work in factories at one point in time. You know, we have a bunch of idiots working there. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they just, don't pay attention just look at our slash, uh, our slash. You had one job to do. <laughs> you had one job to make sure this was spelled right before it went out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think this is where that Mandela came no. from. Okay, <laughs> yes. it is interesting. It makes you talk, and that's what a pondering is, and that's what we do. I'm gonna let you go with your last one because I kind of want to save my last. Oh, one I got two one. of them. I got two of them. Well, oh, snooky, snooky. I got a two of them. I got two of them. So, which one you want me to go? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo? Do you want to pick it? 
No, you get to pick it. All you right. do your eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Alright. Well. I know what my last one is. I think we'll talk about the CERN guy when they made that little skit about people <laughs> believe. Well, now you can do it. <laughs> they lay dollar short. Technology. Me and the AI guy do not get along. <laughs> There's certain uh, scientists that they were made that funny video about people that believe in conspiracy theory. And at the end of the video, he's sitting at his desk and he has Bond 1 and Mandela. Well, the first Bond character, his last name was Nelson and Mandela, you know, Mandela Effect. So, you know, that conspiracy about CERN opening up a black hole and finding out something. If you go faster to the speed of light, you can go back in time and all this stuff. So this is where everyone started truly, truly, after this video, truly believing CERN did something. And that's why there's two un parallel universes slamming together. And that's why we that's have separate we memories. Mandela. That's how that... No, I see how you're coming about that because it's a new one for me. I hadn't really paid attention to it. You know what I mean? Right. I'd heard bits and pieces, whatever, but I never really watched the video or seen any of it until you and I were discussing it. Right. Educational. <laughs> but I see what you're saying, how they're now trying to say CERN is the one that made the two collide and that's how we're coming up that's how they come up with the mandela this is why half the half the world remembers one right, way, one and way the and other half, half the other half remembers the other way right you know and i find that so interesting i mean mining black holes and when we don't know nothing about mining uh miniature black holes you know that could be scary too you know those those things where when scientists say well you know that's a possibility hold on <laughs> It's a possibility. <laughs> now, I, now I'm scared now, a little. Now you've really got me intrigued. <laughs> right. Yeah, there you go. But I, I don't think it's... I think black holes are something we don't understand. And I think w the way we understood it isn't what it is. I think we're finally getting to the science to understand that. Just like they just proven that they can go fast and push a molecule faster than the speed of light. So faster than the speed of light travel is possible. We just didn't have the technology to realize that. Shh. I, you know, I like silent stuff. <laughs> All right. Let me hit. hit let me hit the sim, uh, simple, quick one. So, Smurfy, Smurfy. I know you're a Ford fan. Sure, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Which symbol do you remember the full F? I remember the curly. So you're not one of the people that just remember the old blockhead F. No, I remember the curly. See, I, I'm like you. I never liked Fords. So this one, I uh, this F one over rebuilt Dodge. Yeah, really don't care. Uh, fix and repair daily. Found <laughs> a road dead. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I've never been a <laughs> Ford fan, so I've never really paid attention to the Simia. So this is another one that. Yeah, I mean, it just interests me because I never paid attention right. to Fords. You know, I say now a Chevy or that one about a Chevy or a Dodge or a Cadillac. You know, the only Fords I like was Lincoln, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother story. You know, I see a Ford symbol on a Lincoln, so we ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I remember um, being the curly. Yeah, but where I think that people remember the block letter is. Ford had a lot of overseas companies, right? And they didn't want certain models technically linked to the American Ford company. So they would have a little Ford symbol somewhere else. And then when movies before they, remember when they were blacking out all the assemblies? But before then, they would change the assembly just a little bit. It'd be a similar uh, right, symbol. Insignia yeah, on it, yeah, it'd be similar, but it wouldn't be the exact. So they wouldn't for for uh, mod modifying the car or nothing. Right. There'd be you remember the eighties and nineties. A lot of people, everyone was getting sued 
for anything. Anything you could think of, there was a lawsuit for it. So a lot of these things that people kind of remember might be because of these lawsuits. You know, so they didn't get that trademark infraction yeah. and all that stuff. Stuff a lot of people are talking about on YouTube. It's the same, similar things. You right. know what I mean? So they might remember something in a couple movies, the same uh, producers, same film and crew, and they use those same similar cars, and right. you've seen all these shots in it. Okay, I, I can follow that. And so that became what people remember, because you remember movies more than commercials. Yeah. Unless it's, where's the beef? <laughs> One of them crazy commercials, you know, that just yeah. lasts through the la lifetime. Yeah. All right, Smurfy, I wrap my stuff up. I wrap my stuff up. Well, this next one is near and dear to me. Yeah. Uh -oh. It is Star Wars, and it's only because my eldest child was named after Princess Leia. And that is exactly what we're getting a touch on because I know this movie. I've seen this movie. Shit. I feel like my whole life I've watched this movie. And it is Luke. I am your father. Okay. I know this. I don't care what anybody says. So what is the line that they say it is? They say it is no, Luke. I am your father. No, Luke. I am your father. Or no, I am your father. I My know, bad. I know, but I just wanted to say it anyway. <laughs> no, I am your father. Okay. Now, I did rewatch that after that shit came out. Excuse yes. my French. And it does say what they say it says. I don't care. But those were also all the digitally remastered. Exactly. Because if you listen to... James Earl Jones. But I was leaving it for you to say. Will tell you. And he's the one that played the dark Vader voice. I remember voice. it was Luke. Luke. I am your father. I am your father. That is one that, no. That I will argue up and down till the day I die. They are wrong. I don't care what they put in after they remastered it. I'm wrong. just going with James Earl Jones. He says... Me too. He said that what he said was, Luke, I am your father. He's the one that played the voice. He's the one that done that character. Another thing that is widely known between the forest fires and the floods and old... They didn't realize... Preser... Preser... La, la, la. Yeah, right. Keeping the film at certain temperatures and certain dry and non-humid things, a lot of those old reels got destroyed, the original version. So a lot of them had to be digitally remastered off of copies. So they may have not been able to clear it up and had to revoice it over. And since they revoiced it over, they changed the line. Of course they don't want to tell you that because just like Steven, Steven Spielberg, you can find out a movie when it first released. Six months later, when the other copy comes out, he done changed 16 different things in the movie. And then a year later, when they pop it out again, he done changed another 20 different things. So that's why you have Edition 1, Edition 2, Edition 3 with Steven Spielberg, because all the different changes he has. So this could have been one of those things that the studio doesn't remember doing. So they rather instead of t tell you these secrets, just tell you, nah, you just, you don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. Yeah, you're crazy. Because the publicity of you talking about, no, I remember this, is right, better bad. than them just saying, no, no, this is what we did and no right. one talking yeah. about it no more. I keep it on. Yep. It's all about the dinero. Yes, all about that money, money, money. All righty then. This wraps up our episode on the Mandela Effect. 
Thank you for taking time to listen. We hope to hear some feedback on what you think of our topics tonight. Remember, if it interests you, it's worth a pondering moment. Thank you.